Let me take a look at what do you got? I'm moving to the speculation station a lot. Speculation station. <laughs> Hello and welcome to episode two of the Speculation Station podcast. Hello. I'm Will. I'm today's invigorator. That's not correct. We're going with the invigorator now, The interrogator. Interrogator. Yes, and with me is... Uh, I'm Tom, okay, and I'm this week's speculator. That's why I'm wearing this affection jacket. I thought it appropriate. Oh, that's why. Yeah, yeah. Of course that's why. I like to, you know, play dress up. In a moment, I'm going to present Tom with an object, (laughs) and then he'll be forced to speculate upon it. What fun. Mm. Well... Quick drink. Fun is a question. Clean. Cheers. Cheers. Mmm. Well, crack out this object then. It better Here we go. go. Close your eyes. I'm closing. Okay. I'm excited. Please open your eyes. Ah! <laughs> Tell the audience what you have. I have a firearm. It's probably... Is it? A, I'm assuming some kind of BB gun. It is a, a BB gun or airsoft gun. Airsoft. Is that what they call it? Yeah. I must add for our audience that this is a legal... Airsoft gun in the UK, it is coloured mostly with a bright colour, which is yeah, the legal because, requirement. You know, it's incredibly dangerous just to show it's a pretend gun. Though I imagine if I pulled the trigger and shot myself in the eye, it would hurt. It would hurt a great deal. Let me check the clip because I think there is actually yeah, there's there's one or two BBs in so it. So I could have just you, really hurt myself there. Yeah, good good okay. gun safety. Okay, thank you. Yes. How does it feel? So aren't you supposed to do a like uh, a thing with guns when you first like check the magazine? Yeah. Okay, check the safety. Where's the safety? Check the slide. There's no safety. Actually, There's no on, safety? Well, on a real gun like this... It, it on has a real a, gun? It has... No, sorry. If it was a real gun, <laughs> it would have a built-in safety. I don't understand how it works, but it has a built-in safety. So, yeah, okay. Yeah, so, yeah, it, it, it's got a fantastic heft to it's it. It's really hefty, and isn't it? it's cold. Like, cold steel. It makes you feel quite powerful when no, you hold I'm it, I'm sure, right? you know, for any American listeners, they're probably laughing at us, like, right oh, now. Absolutely. As, if, as if this is the, the least anything ever. Well, I thought that's why I've been an interesting <laughs> object. Do, 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 do Americans have uh, guns with breakfast? Is that is that normal? Guns and breakfast, <laughs> that's every day for right, Americans. Right, okay, yes. Oh, does it have <sighs> any smell? It has a smell. It's quite indefinable. It's, uh, one might say tinny and oily. Do you have any idea what real-world gun it is modelled on? Some kind of Glock. You're right, it is model of Glock. It had a G on it. <laughs> That's a pretty good. What else does it say on the gun? Okay, it's G26C, mil spec, 9X119. Do you know what mil spec means? I haven't the foggiest. What does spec stand for? Speculation. I mean, very good branding. <laughs> great branding. Not what it stands uh, for. It's military specification. Military specification, course, yeah. which means it's the it's the kind of Not military. Not millennium use. specification. Or millennium speculation. <laughs> okay, I'm going to draw a question from the card deck. Mm. A question deck, let's say. Ah, the question is, can we make it fly? Uh, I could throw it. <laughs> and we can see what happens. Is throwing an object really making it fly? Uh, I, we've all seen Toy well, Story. Let's rephrase the question. How could we make it fly? How would you make that, like, literally glide through the air with no drop? I, or I'd imagine drop? wings would be a good start. Wings would be a great start. Or, the other angle is we, we, we give it helicopter blades. Oh, or, I mean, these days, drones, you know, very popular. But this is much heavier than the entire drone. You'd have to have if, one of those big drones. If you slipped the magazine out and it, like, hovered between, like, magazine stations where it, like, picked up ammo, then maybe you could do something like that. I see that your knowledge of this has come mostly from gaming. Uh, not at all. <laughs> and look, F- Films? No, no. no. Okay. My knowledge of this is using guns and killing people with them, obviously. Oh, of course, because you're such a gun I, user. Yes, I'm a natural gun user. That's why I'm pointing it at you right now, because I feel... Like, I must. How much do you know about handgun laws in our country, in the UK? Uh, I know that it's probably just illegal to have handguns, but they have to be locked in cases in the club, in the shooting club, pretty much. What, uh, handguns are actually blanket illegal across the UK. That do you okay. remember why or when? Because that of Dunblane. Dunblane was, yes, a, a terrible... horrible school shooting in Scotland, where uh, a guy w- went into a school and just killed a lot of kids. Famously, the British n- t- number one tennis player, Andy Murray... Was Ooh. at Dunblane. He oh, he was gosh, a child yes. at Dunblane when it happened. Totally forgot that. Slipped yeah. my mind. Something similar happened in Australia. In, in both of our countries, in the UK, Australia, an incident like that happened. And as a nation, we said, "That's it. No, no more handguns for us. Thank you." Yeah. And we haven't really looked back. It's an interesting, you know, because I've heard arguments where you know, like you know, you know, because of that, we don't have real freedom in the UK. But I, I find that I've seen people say that online. Laughable, I think like, Americans don't understand that the rest of the world, certainly in the UK, we don't really care about guns. They, they are not a cultural object. Fun with this gun. We like them, it's, sure. It's, it's a toy. No, and that's the interesting thing, is as certainly in Britain, you do not get get to touch a gun unless it's a toy. Even when you're not, even a gun like this. 
my parents would have been very reticent to give me anything like this. Sure. I would have had, I had many cap guns and I, I mean, I've got many cap guns. You do? I've got a couple of cap guns. I noticed guns a few here. caps uh, on your shelf. Uh, indeed. Uh, cap guns are wonderful fun. I, uh, I used them at my wedding. Uh, That's true. Yeah. Um, Was you dressed as a cowboy? Because here's the thing. Here's the other problem. Okay. Because of course, yes, it's bad to say, yes, gun, you know, guns are bad, but that we can't play shoot. Okay. I think a lot of people have a problem with it's very playing shooty shoot, which is yes. pew pew. It's very easy to say, to blanket say that guns are no, bad. No, no, yeah, and As you may know, I used to shoot guns at school. I was yeah. in the school shooting club. I was captain yeah, of the yeah, school shooting club. <laughs> Luckily I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I totally killed a guy at school. <laughs> I was actually amazed at school when I was a teenager and I got into the school shooting club. I was amazed that there was no form to sign. There was no parental permission slip it was just do you want to shoot guns yes or no yes here's a gun go off shooting obviously it was more controlled than that but there weren't many legal obstacles or hurdles to jump over that's that's surprising have you ever shot a real firearm before of course not would you like to <laughs> yeah of course yeah. <laughs> Who would not? okay yeah I know. I, you know i'd like to shot a death laser you know any any weapon a nuclear i'd like to watch a nuclear bomb go off that would be interesting sure that's is that is that would you say that's the inevitable i'm not lying People who say they're not, don't want to see these things, are lying. I is is a nuclear say. bomb the inevitable conclusion of taking no, guns no, no, in their no, further It's just sport. one step along the way. Oh, right, so there's even more than <laughs> nuclear Of course, weapons. we'll just get a bigger bomb that will blow up planets, won't okay, we? Okay, okay. We've all seen Star Wars, right? No, I'm oh, sorry, what's Star Wars? Oh, well, it's like the Shawshank Redemption. Sorry, what's the Shawshank Redemption? <laughs> well, it's like... Uh... <laughs> okay, I'm going to choose another question card from the deck. Mm. Oh, no, okay, well, this should be quite interesting then. Please tell me... Why does this exist? Um, to kill people. Yeah, it's pretty much well, it, isn't no, it? But, but it's not, because this exists because it's a replica of a real gun, so people can play guns and pew-pew That's true. without actually killing people. Well, let's go back to the more concrete guns. object. Yeah, an actual gun itself. Well, Why do guns exist? Well, yes, uh, uh, there, there are a number of arguments. They're, they're there to kill people. Yeah. Okay. Well, not only to kill people, to harm people, to, or to, to disable people, yeah. to threaten. threaten. But here's the most powerful thing about a gun. It makes you feel powerful. Even this pretend gun... Makes me kind of. I don't want to let it go. It has a great weight uh, in your hand, yeah, right? And you, you kind of feel like you, you kind of feel naturally powerful with it. And I imagine you feel kind of pretty strong when you're strutting around with a real gun in, you know, like a, a six shooter or some shit. That's right. No, my knowledge of guns that I brought up six shooter is the only thing I can think of right there. Well, I must uh, admit, owning this gun myself, I, I, I from time to time slip it in the waistband yeah. of your trousers or da, da, in the back. Down the co cock, cockpit. Down, down the cockpit, point. yes, what, and what then you slap that? it down, down the front. The front of down your the belt. Down the groin, yes. Yes, you didn't need to make it quite so explicit, but there you go. Yes, I did. Is there any you know, good reason for it to exist? Yes. Yes? Well, sometimes people need to die. <laughs> Excellent. That takes us to our next question. <laughs> well, who would benefit from this, says the car? Well, uh, somebody who wants to kill someone. Uh, arguably, somebody who wants to stay safe in a very dangerous environment. Imagine you're living in a war zone. I think having a gun will probably make you feel pretty good. Sure. Yeah. Let me take it to a further extent. Who would absolutely most benefit from this object? Absolutely well, individual. No, I would disagree. I would say it is firearms manufacturers. Oh, I, I don't know whether I agree with that. Really? Because, well, yeah, of course, because they, for they them, make money. Yeah, right? They, make money. Yeah, they yeah. don't care who uses it for what. All they care is about the object is sold yeah, and they make money. But, I'm not blanket but, calling them evil. Yeah, but, but, here's the thing with the... the, the, the Give me your but. I think... There's a reason people make guns, okay? It's because people want guns. I'd say so the, the primary the, the, reason is to make money. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. But the reason there is a company that makes firearms for yes. people okay, is because... The, people there want are, guns. People want guns. And there are plenty of people who really like guns who aren't douches. But That's there are true. plenty of people who are douches that like guns, and both of those people buy guns. But is that they? a valid is that a valid enough argument for making them? Let me sidestep a moment. Here. Yes, I saw <laughs> I saw in the news yesterday. I think it was EA or Activision, one of these big games publishers, mm. talking about things like loot boxes, microtransactions, paid DLC. I mean, they're, they're horrendous idea. Yes, and everyone has most gamers have that negative reaction to them. Their argument is, and I heard this yesterday, is that if people stop buying them, we wouldn't need to make them. So does that apply to this as well, do you think, then? You know, do we, do we I mean, propagate yes, it? to some extent. Like, the idea of the casual gun owner, okay, certainly in the UK, is a non-existent thing. Except, obviously, people who go to gun clubs and, and whatnot. Right? And the practical use of farmers who use yeah, it. Yeah, for exactly, yeah, exactly, yeah. That kind of thing, and I think, yeah, but beyond that, I think, yeah, definitely, although a handgun... In the UK, I don't see anybody, you know, any normal, reasonable person using one. There's no need for a UK citizen to no, need a handgun. No, no, no. Absolutely you, what not. What you do need is to be able to break people's, you know, you know, souls with your with your stare or something like that. And maybe listeners around the world 
might not know, be interested to know that <laughs> we are maybe one of the few, maybe one of one of two or three police forces around the world in which our patrol officers do not routinely carry guns. No, but we do have armed response officers. Yes, my my wife's cousin is a is an armed response officer in the Shit, UK police. Kill anyone. I'm not going to go into that. <laughs> no, of course, no. But the amazing thing he says, if you think there's a lot of paperwork that comes with. Mm. drawing your gun in the UK which there is of course mm. there's even more paperwork from simply drawing your police baton mm. simply getting it out of its that holster requires you to fill, fill in paperwork yeah. why did you do it what was the need whereas in America it feels like and I don't want to be too negative here but police officers will get their gun out as standard there's no that's a good fair point yeah there's no consequence of that let's say but again it, I guess it's the sort of social contract is quite different and there's something yes. that's very different about the UK and I will say compared to the rest of Europe which does have more of a gun issue we're an island Yes, and it's much harder to smuggle guns into an island than it is to a country with massive land borders. In which case, in what part of our recent history have guns been most problematic for the UK in general? I mean, there's the whole First and Second World War was pretty even massive. more recent. Ooh. You'd have to help me out here. Cause not on the mainland. What? Not on the UK mainland or the English you mean mainland. The Falklands. <laughs> no, even closer <laughs> to home. Hmm. Ireland. I, of course. The IRA. The Troubles. The, the Troubles, as it's called. Amazing. We grew up when the Troubles were still very much a problem. And yes, then, indeed. as we got older, the, the, it was well, almost it, we, stopped. We, we, we remember the Good Friday Agreement. Where, That's amazing. Uh, which is, uh, was it during Tony Blair's reign? I was about to say, so as much as we like don't like Tony Blair, most people don't. He's a bit of a smarmy git. But, but he and Bill Clinton and some others really did sit down and... There are worse people in the world than Tony Blair. There are. And, though that's probably a controversial statement for many people. Oh, I'm mean, sure. <laughs> in the current political climate, we won't go too far into that because I want to get into another question. I see that you're still holding I, the I gun. I cannot not hold the gun. It's yeah, no. too, too undrivable. <sighs> okay, here's an interesting question that you and I came up with. Yeah. What the hell? Um, well, what the hell would I do with this? That's a good okay. one. Well, if I had this and there were no constraints, <laughs> uh, I would paint it black so it looked like a real gun. Of course. Uh, if it was what the hell, you know, uh, and maybe, you know, if I genuinely wanted to threaten somebody, I would, you know, paint it black and I would, but I would hide it and I would, I think the, the, the best thing is if you wanted to pretend this was a real gun is to not show it too much, just to show its shape. That's it. A little bit, you know, tuck it in here. Let me be, you know, honest then because... I feel like if someone broke into my house at night time, if I held that gun and came downstairs and pointed at them, there would be enough of a psychological imperative for them to be shocked by it and yes, be yes. taken I, I'll back. admit, I, 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 in that situation, I do prepare a stick or other hef hefty item. You've got to have a stick around. Mm -hmm. Some, something, do something. you remember the incident during our maybe teenage years of the UK farmer who yes, shot and was, killed uh, a burglar? Yes, it was actually quite close to where I uh, come from. Do you remember his name? No, I wish I did. I think it was Tony something. Tony right? Martin. Tony Martin, there, there we go. There we go, we together. got there. Okay, and he, he shot two kids in the back. He did. That was one of the big problems. He shot them in the back as they were fleeing. But a lot of people said, maybe mm. quite sensibly, that he was defending his property. Maybe he shouted warnings Perhaps at them. He could have done. But he was a farmer, so he did have a gun. And I would say in this country, yes. the most, most of the people with guns are generally farmers who need them for practical yeah, yeah. purposes. I mean, do, you, do they? Do they need them? Yeah. Yes, pest control, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So, but what, what are the pests? Badgers? Stoats? I don't know. That's a good Owls. question. Rabbits, even, maybe. I think it's surely stuff that eat in their crops, right? Yes, but or dig holes on the land. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I know badgers are a big deal for farmers because they ruin a lot of farmland and they, you know, like damage. That's true. And they hunt and they kill. There was a, a picture online in the last week or so comparing a British badger with an American badger the British badger is this lovely, you know, wind in the willows. That's not the right term. Regal. They're kind of no, not animal. regal, but almost cartoony animal. It's yeah. very fluffy and it's very pleasant looking. With a little black and white face. And it showed it with an American badger. An American badger looked brutal as fuck. And he looked aggressive. <laughs> looks so like is he it, could... Are you sure talking about a wolverine? <laughs> it could have been, actually. But I think it was an American badger. Mm. They look like they're, they're not messing around. But then British badgers are No, I'm not sure badgers around. are a thing. Because I remember in 101 Dalmatians. Ah, oh, that's good information. Yeah, 101 Dalmatians, that terrible movie but because of the american audience they actually cut out the badger and put in a raccoon instead this is not as familiar a, an animal then yes because okay. badgers are very familiar to british people and i don't know whether that's because they're not so common or whether it's not such a big deal over yeah, there. badgers are more culturally present let's say mm. in british culture our stories our children's books our cartoons would you shoot a badger though no, I, I would. I, I, if preferable, I would never shoot a live creature at no, all, or kill see, a live creature. I think I think badgers are perhaps one of my favourite creatures. I, w I would say they're interesting. Yeah, and they're very they're rarely seen. Have well, you you, seen? I was going to say you and I both enjoy the books of Brian Jacks, as of we course, pronounce yes, him, who wrote the, the Red Wall books. 
If anyone doesn't know what Redwall is, Redwall is an amazing series of books, books written by Liverpudlian, British author Brian Jacks, who's now sadly dead, yes. about animals. It's a world of animals. Unfortunately, there's, there's a slight inherent racism that all the good animals are mice and badgers and sometimes birds, and all the evil animals are weasels <laughs> and stoats and, and rats. rats. Rats, right? Rats are always the most yeah, evil. Of course they are. Yeah. But badgers in, in his books are big and they're brutal, and those books are amazing because as, as much as they're almost Christian in their sense of be good to each other, let's have big banquets and be nice to each other, and then after that, let's have a massive battle I mean, in which people I mean, get killed. can't leave the banquet thing alone. For, the, the, the food in in Redwall is absurd. All vegetarian, but the, that's the, interesting. But it is all vegetarian, but it's the description of the food is in such ludicrous detail, like all the nuts and you know, ha- you know, hazel soups. and so, so many soups and Desserts. potatoes and vegetables. It's lavishly described, it's and it makes you hungry. It makes you hungry throughout. It's one of the few books. And speaking of badges, oh yes, and actually kind of related to guns and sort of oh, yeah, industrialization. Uh, uh, there's the Animals of Farthing Wood is the other thing it brings to mind, of course. Book series and later an and animated later, CV animated series. Animated series, both well worth it for the kids. More, I, think. I would say, more dark. It's than very Redwall. dark, yeah, and harrowing. It teaches of. kids a lot about uh, the darkest death. of emotions. It, lots, of, lots of death. Speaking Animals of death, dying. let's come back to the gun for a moment and take an, another question. Oh, <gasps> there's a wild card. Oh, gosh. I'm the excited. wild card name is Woe Is Me. Oh, shit. You must answer the next question with a negative attitude. Okay. Let's Let's see what the next question is. Okay, negative. Here we go. This is an interesting one to be negative about. Don't be so energetic. You're negative, remember. How might this affect the future? Shitly. Oh, he's so negative. So, if we had this BB... If we had... See, if you had BB guns in the future... Okay. If everyone owned a BB gun Any in the future, which gun. is I assume what you're proposing. Yes. Uh, B- if everyone owned BB guns in the future, then everyone would have small bruises on their temples. Because everyone would be like shooting, shooting, shooting and covered in small bruises. And then everyone will be really angry and stressed and have headaches, and thus civilization would crumble. Let's move beyond, okay, like we did earlier, rather than the BB gun, then, because that's a good answer. Yeah. As, a, as an actual gun, if this represents an actual firing handgun, how would a handgun affect the future? So, handgun. Or, or guns in general? It, I, well, it depends. It depends what happens to the handgun. Because surely, as we go on, the handguns can become more and more efficient and, more and, and better. You might even be able to, you know, like. Uh, it, we might we might have some kind of I doubt we'll have laser guns I think that's very unlikely that we'll have as much as we'd like them as much as we all want the laser gun you know the power cells are it's not possible but I think it will get upgraded and become more efficient and better and more dangerous and deadly probably do more you, accurate do you think this is quite an esoteric question do you think there'll be a time in the future however long in the future when we will never use weapons or firearms ever again no you think we'll always I think have it's, I think that's a, a, a wishful thinking do you think it's an inherent part of yeah, who we so are yeah it's that whole yeah I yeah, of course it is. Like the the idea the, we're we're becoming less violent as time goes on, right? and I think that's that's true. We, but the the maybe the idea that we won't have handguns is entirely possible. But we'll have drones that kill people with guns. Oh, well, I mean, we already do have exactly. But it'll be easier, and that become easier and easier. And it's easier. interesting to note, but we we'll always have some kind of sidearm. I think Star Trek in all of its iterations, which is always lauded as a kind of utopic ideal of the future, or utopian ideal of the future, they have essentially handguns. Yes, and they have which stun, can stun and kill. or kill. The fact that they do have a kill setting is quite quite odd. The fact that well, Picard think, could kill someone. And that, that's about as utopic as it gets. And obviously they're a kind of quasi-military force. They know they pretend it not to be military. But, military but yes. they are militaristic in their structure and behaviour. Their and the ship has incredibly powerful weapons. And ridiculous weapons. The, the, I think the, the idea that we can dance around in, in, in you know uh, having no weapons is laughable. But it'd be nice if we didn't have to have point guns at each other all the time. It but, would. but in certain situations, they will be used. There's no way you're going to get rid of people who are going to use them. That's fair enough. I right. think that's a good place to end on for that object. Thank you very much Thank for you your very speculation. Much. My pleasure. Should we Should we cheers to the end of the, the podcast? Are you going to hold the gun? I've at got the same? to hold the gun. <laughs> cheers. Cheers. I'm going to clink my glass on the gun. Oh, that was very okay. metallic. And cheers to all of you at home. Okay, play safe. Thanks for watching or listening. We'll see you next time on the Speculation Station podcast for another object and another round of speculating. Good luck. Enjoy. Good luck and goodbye. Bye, Bye. everyone. Hey, don't move. You have to fire it. Like, it would be so dumb not to. I can't believe we haven't actually... Do a fade out. You've got to cock the the lever. The slide, sorry. Fire it at this, this drape, maybe. Where did that go? Just so we get a couple of shots. There it is. That's one of them, at least. How did you feel shooting the gun? Powerful. Of course he made you feel powerful. Speculation station.